thank you for joining me in this sixth edition of my UFT web recording and testing series. Now, in this particular video, I'm going to be focusing on some additional technologies in the web arena. And one of them is known as SAP UI5. Now, we've talked in the previous videos on the subject of web in general and web applications. I think we had a pretty good set of exercises there. Now, I want to talk to you about two more, SAP UI5 and another one that, if I scroll down here, SAP Web Extension. I'll come back to that in a minute. But this particular video, I want to focus on this particular technology known as SAP UI5. And you can find some information out at this site, the openui5hanaondemand.com, some further documentation on the subject. You can also do a search for SAP UI5 demo kit and that will take you to some of that information there's an additional site well it's actually an additional page that's known as demo apps and you will see more specifics about what i'm talking to you about and there are in particular two applications one known as shopping cart and the other one as browse orders and these are both written in using the SAP UI5 technology. I have a desire to test both of these applications, and these are the links to those. And again, you can get that by doing the search for SAP UI5 demo kit, and you'll get all, you'll see all this. So I'm, I'm thinking that at this point, we have enough time in this video to cover the first application, the shopping cart. I have enough meat in that script that I created in UFT that I think you will find it very interesting and very useful to you in learning about how to use UFT with SAP UI5 applications. I'm going to, on my own, go out and look at the browse order application, do some recording with it, and see if I find some things that I think is interesting that you just got to see. I will create yet another video and add to this series. For now, as I said, I'm focusing on this particular application, the one that's called the shopping cart application. Now, as far as SAP Web Extension is concerned, that is yet another technology that is supported by the UFT product, and it's for the SAP Business Networks web solutions. Right now, as far as I have researched, I know that the big player is what used to be known as SAP Ariba, and it has features like doing purchase orders, invoicing, monitoring payment status, sourcing events, and so on. SAP Ariba is now being redeveloped in using this SAP Web Extension technology, and so it's an interesting business network web application. But there isn't a demo that I could find available at the moment. I would have loved to have done that. I have done some UFT testing with SAP Ariba in the past. I would love to be able to do it for the business networks web solution, but it's there's no demo available there at the moment. So I'm not going to do any more than tell you about this, that it, that there is this technology supported by UFT 
If you happen to be on a project where they are converting from SAP Ariba to the SAP Business Networks web solutions, then you would have a chance to actually use UFT and the SAP Web Extension. Be aware it's not supported, as far as I know of so far, by the Edge browser. It is supported by Chromium and I believe Safari. And as I said, there's no demo apps that I could find. If I do find some in the future, I may go ahead and create a video tutorial for you. Okay. Enough of the housekeeping. Let's move on to the application itself. Now, we're looking at one of the screens, the launch screens, if you will, for OpenText UFT1. And here is where I'm showing you what I select. You may select even less than that. You may not feel like you need the ActiveX, and that's okay. It's highly likely it's not needed. But you do need the SAP and the SAP UI5 for the SAP UI5 technology. If you were going to do scripting for the SAP web extension, you'd need to have that checked. Or I would say one or the other, not both, because the more you select in here, the more memory it's going to consume. And UFT1 is a memory hog, so keep that in mind. I also select the Visual Basic because I usually add Visual Basic code, and you'll need the web add-in as well. You don't need all of the lower-level add-ins for that, and I believe WPF is necessary as well. Don't quote me on that. That I may be incorrect on that, but I've checked it. It's not a big problem. We click the OK button to move on with the launching of UFT1. And momentarily, we'll be at the IDE. And we're going to take a look at a script that I created that is multifaceted. It is an interesting script that I created, and I think you will find it pro provides you with some good, interesting information. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me go ahead and expand. And let me bring up the script. Actually, I believe I can go to the recent. Oops. And here it is. SAP UI 5. Okay, so we're at the diagram, the test flow diagram, and while we're here, I want to mention a couple of things here. If I click on this little down arrow, now you can see the entire script from a structural design standpoint. So what we have in this UFT script is four actions. And the action one is you can consider it the main portion of the script. And then there's action two, three, and four that can be called from action one. We're going to go into a little more detail of what that's about. Okay. And down at the bottom, I'm also going to talk a little bit more. You're, you're looking at the global sheet, and this has to do with a variable that's been defined there. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more, too, when we talk about action one. So you have the four actions. They can be opened at any time. Right now, the action one is open, so I'm going to click on that one and talk briefly about it. Get you familiar with 
this script. I'm going through some of the information to help you understand what I have here. As I said, action one is the control action. So that is the first action that gets processed by executing this script. And what we have here is it starts with a checkpoint to check the shopping cart. You'll see what that's about. And then I have a dim statement to define a variable called run control. And notice it's case insensitive. And so therefore I can specify run underscore, underscore control with a small c, lowercase c, and it's the same thing. All right. I have this data table dot value statement, and that is picking up that variable that's defined down here in the global sheet for run control. And I have a value original. What the value is about are these three values can be specified in that cell. One is original. The second one is fixed, and the third is enhanced. Well, that's about these actions. Action two is the original script. Action three is the fixed script. There were problems after it recorded that I had to go through and make changes, and so that represents the changes to fix the script to cause it to run successfully. The action four is enhancement. It includes not only the fixes, but enhancements to the script. So I'm going to actually go bottom up. I'm going to start with the enhanced script and then go back to the one that's fixed and then talk about what it looked like, and how we got to fix it. So I think that will be useful to you, valuable to you. Now, to talk more about this particular action. You'll see some if statements here. Let me scroll up a little bit. We're saying that we want to pick up the value from the run control cell, and that's the global sheet. And so it would pick up a value in this example, original, the value original. And then it would check run control to see if original is there. If it is, then we want to run action two. If fixed is there, we run action three and so on. If enhanced is there, we run action four. So we don't run all of these actions in the same execution of the script. It's one of each of those, depending on what that value is. All right, and then when it's finished, it comes back and the last line, line 22, will actually report in the output that the test completed successfully. You'll see that in the output. All right, that's enough on action one. Then we want to take a look at action four. Action four, I will double click on it. And there it is. And now we're looking at it. At the top, we have that another checkpoint. And then we have a browser. Uh, I'm sorry, an SAP UI list object that we're look, looking at, that we'll be looking at in the, in the application, and we will go forward from there. Now, notice this one is making use of yet another table, and that table is the Action 4 sheet. And in it, I have some pieces of data. I have several columns, item one, item two, supplier, category one, category two. And in them, I have two rows 
of values that will be utilized in this script. So what I'm saying, if you look at this first one, it says Benda Laptop 1408, that will be utilized in the script. Uh, that's for item one. If I can locate that real quick. Item two, item one. There it is. Line seven. It has item one. And, it, and what I'm doing, I got a data table dot value method that will pick up the item one cell and the value that's in item one. And the first iteration is row two. And then it's going to be from action four. So I have to specify, if you're not familiar with this kind of statement, I have to specify with the data table dot value what cell I'm look wanting to look at and what action or what sheet I want to look at. And we have several others. This is about the enhancements. So I'm using the data table dot value, which is a way to interact with the table or in internal Excel sheets, if you will, spreadsheets that I can pull data from it and bring it into the script. All right, so I have several of those. Some things are still hard coded. They could be changed as well to give you more flexibility in the testing of this shopping cart application. All right. I don't want to spend too much time talking about this, but it will be available, like all the scripts, will be available at my website, which is softwaretestingqa.com. So, so much for that. Let's see what else I want to share with you. So this one, as I said, has the fixes in it, and the fixes are things like this AI we're using AI technology again. I'm going to show you how I did that. So right now, you're just going to see the results of my debugging the problems that existed when I first recorded the script. But <clears throat> here, we also have, I'll show you at the end here, again, another reference using the data table value for category two, that value, picking that up and putting it into one of the statements to process. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then finally finishing up with an action check to say, hey, action four completed successfully. So when I look at the output, I know what actually ran. Okay. Now, I want, what I'll do is I'll come back when we're done with this one and I'll go to action three, talk about it, what's there, and then action two, talk about it. And each time I will be executing them. So I would like to go ahead and execute this. This one, you should see it runs nicely. There are a couple of points at which it delays. I'm not sure why. I would love to do some further analysis to find out if there's any way to improve on that. So it takes about three minutes in total for this test to run. But let's go ahead and, and oh, oh, one, one more thing. Let me make sure we go back to the global before we execute. It's set to original. We don't want it at original. What we want is enhanced. Now, I want to tell you one more thing about this. With that word enhanced, if I just specify that one row with enhanced, there's only going to be one iteration of the test. But I have data in action four for two iterations, but the action four Sheets, just like action one, two, and three, do not control 
iteration processing in UFT. The global sheet does that. So if I go into this cell three, which is the, I'm sorry, oops, cell three, paste that. Now I have in cell two and three, which will be iteration one and iteration two, I'm causing that to occur so that it's going to utilize the data in action four, both rows. All right, let's see that in action. So I do a save here. We're now going to run the enhance, which means it's going to execute action four after action one. Let's go ahead and start that process. I'm also using the temporary results, so everything is going to be overlaid as we run through the test. I won't have the previous test to go back to and look at. And that's another way of doing your testing and maybe a little bit more efficient unless you really need to keep the output for whatever reasons. Okay, we're really beginning to test now. Cart credit card, and then switched over to cash on delivery. Data entry completed. Cart now empty. Getting ready to save the changes. An empty cart. And we should be moving ahead momentarily to iteration two. And here we are moving ahead with iteration two. We selected the titanium products. Now we selected one of those, put it in the cart, going through the credit card and cash delivery process again. Clearing the cart. And it looks like we have completed this round of testing. Momentarily we'll look at the output. And first thing you can see is that there are two iterations of output. We'll briefly take a look at that. I can expand each one by itself or just click on the down expand all button. I'm going to first click this one and expand this a little bit more. And so we can see in the in the first one action one everything looks good there. We've got plenty of check marks, navigation tests, data entry tests, action check, test check. So that looks pretty good. We can expand the other and see similar type of thing. Expand the action one, expand the action four. And so we see the navigation test, the data entry test, action check, test check. And of course, when I click on the test check, it tells us test completed successfully. So both rounds completed successfully. I could change this test check to be an iteration check, and that would be in keeping with the way that it's designed now. And 
I can expand further on each one of these browser sections and the shopping cart and see that this is all the data entry that went fine. It accepted the entries. And if I expand on the this browser, this is going to, you'll see the last, <coughs> excuse me, the last part of the testing, working with the shopping cart. And the first part of the testing, which I refer to as the navigation, one more time, and that's the navigation process in the beginning of the iteration. In each iteration does the same thing. I'm not going to spend any more time on that. Uh, hopefully we'll see a little bit more of this again as we move on to the next, to Action 3. I'll double click on Action 3 and show you that this one was about fixing the problems that were encountered. And so you see some AI util or AI statements that have to do with utilizing AI. And you'll see it on line 13 and 14 again. I may have it somewhere else. Let's see if that's the case. Yes, I do have one more here on line 45. So what I'm saying is I had to use an AI to fix a problem with save changes. The original recorded statement that I commented out could not find that particular item. Now, it's possible I could have used, right before this statement, a sync point statement to try to make it wait long enough so that it would detect the save changes. Now, that could be a good solution as well. However, I chose to make use of the AI to show you how that works and show you that it can be as reliable as, in this case, we're using the SAP UI5 technology. You're seeing all the add-in uh, methods that are available for it. And for the most part, it works pretty good. But you can see that the SAP UI list is not always reliable as well. And that's why the AI statements are here for this AIP SAP UI list, it was not able to detect that was the first of the list that I wanted to process and could not process that. It couldn't select it. And so I had to use an AI find text block method, which found that entry and was able to click on it. Same thing right up here. Couldn't find selection two. And so I util I specified, which is the hard coding of that value and clicked on it using an AI statement. So that's pretty much the fixes with the exception of this little checkpoint. We didn't need that. Uh, let me go over to the repository so you can see this one we're referring to as the shopping cart. Uh, let's see, right here, these checkpoints. On the shopping cart, what it was looking for is this information. And, and the next time I'll try to point that out to you. So it was looking for load time, number of images, number of links, and it did that successfully. But when it tried to do the shopping two and shopping three, it wanted to, to do a check on the alt property check and the multimedia links and server side image checks. Well, these went successful because only because there wasn't anything there for those two, but there were uh, all of the links, if you will, uh, images that had alternate properties 
associated with them, but they had no values in them. So it's a way of checking and finding out that has the HTML code been created properly with values in these. And since we don't really need to test that, uh, we needed to turn those off. The browser, I mean, the UFT record process created those, generated those statements, and we don't need them. Okay, enough said on that. So we should be ready to go ahead and try this one. It should run as well, but it doesn't have the enhancements in it. So everything is hard-coded. It There's no variables that would define for action three. Now, in order for us to run action three, we need to change this value again. This time, we want the word fixed. And I'm only going to use one iteration. So I'll go ahead and backspace on that one. And now we have just one iteration that we want to run for this particular test. And we'll save everything and go ahead and execute. And hopefully everything will run fine. We'll know soon enough. As I said before, you can expect at certain points to see that Script seems to have a delay for some reason, and I'm not sure why. And I may have mentioned before that I would like to do some further analysis to find out if I have time. Okay, let's expand that. And we should be able to expand the browser. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm running again. It looks like I may have had some odd problem with the run control value. I might have accidentally put a blank in there. It, that's the only thing I can think of that occurred. We'll see momentarily. Okay, this is letting me know that it is running this time. It just didn't seem like it was going through Action 3 at all. Now it is. And as long as we don't have any issues that have to do with synchronization between the script and the application navigation, then we should have a good test. Seems to be running okay at the moment. Shopping cart interaction. Taking the credit card and cash on delivery information. Getting down to the last part of the test cycle. And this one should do just one iteration. And we should see the output. Looks good so far. All right, let's take a look at that. <clears throat> Expand all. We have one iteration, and here's all the output. I'm not going to go into detail on that, but I do want to mention you see the AI there and there. Successful, no problem. And down here, is there another? Yes, right here for the save changes. And the result is the action three completed successfully. Okay, we're done with that one. Is this? Oh, there was something else I was going to mention. Well, I did mention to you. I showed you in the 
object repository that each of these checkpoints had its own set of things that it checks. And this one actually checks load time, number of images, number of links. And then it actually lists the links that it found. So this is kind of interesting output that's made available from this checkpoint for shopping cart. All the images that it saw. Okay, enough on this one. Close that. Now we're going to go to action two. Action two is the one that had the problems. It is the original script. Let me first go ahead and put in the word original because we want it to attempt to run that. Now, hopefully I didn't make any mistake in that cell. Let's go to action two. And this is what the script originally looked like. It had those checkpoints and one of those is not good. We'll have to comment that out. And it's all, everything is hard coded. There's no variables involved at, at this point for action two. And we're going to have a problem with, I believe, both of these. The SAP UI list for s selecting item two and item one. And I think there was another area where we have a problem or will have a problem with the save changes. And not all, not everything appeared, uh, caused a UFT to display an error except for in the output report. We're going to see one error that occurs during the execution. And that one I'm going to actually interact with the AI to show you how I fixed a particular problem. Okay, let's see. I think we're ready to go ahead, save everything. We'll run control is for original. Let's see what happens. As I mentioned, we should see a pop-up window that occurs that UFT found an error and couldn't go any further with the execution. And so we'll want to go into a debug mode and fix one problem using AI and then it should run further, and then in the output, we will see a couple of other error messages as well, and we'll need to address those. Okay, it's starting. I believe it's one of these. Okay, here is the error. I'll give you a moment to see that. It, it reads, if, if you can't read it, cannot identify the object, add to cart. Verify that this object properties match an object currently displayed in your application. Now, this is really interesting. This is, I've run this test several times offline to test that I can keep doing what I did at first. This is not the original problem that occurred or that caused the pop-up. This is for line 14. So this will be interesting to see what we can do about this. This is the add to cart. And so if I click on the debug, and it's talking about line 14. What I expected was it to talk either about line 11 or the other one, which is somewhere here. Oh yeah, line four. So line four and line 11 were the 
where the original problems were. It seems to have gone past that, and a reason being, as I mentioned earlier, is that it's possible that if I placed some sink points right before these two, they may work more consistently. Doesn't mean that when you fix problems, you don't get other problems, because synchronization is an important part of the scripting and executing to navigate through an application. Sometimes there are delays internally that you can't control and it will fail, such as in this case. This was not a problem initially, and it may also be a problem with synchronization. So we'll still try to do the AI fix. First, what you do, you do it live. So I went in a debug mode. I'm going to click AI and select the first option. That's going to take me to the application. Here we are, and it expects me to click in somewhere in the screen. I'm wanting to, let's say, click in the window here. And what we're saying is we need to be able to click on the save. Is that the, the, the one it said? We'll look back at that again. And we want to add to test. Let's take a moment to switch back. It says, yeah, the add to cart. Okay, so let's see if that's available there. Going back here. We have the little AI window now, and I think it's out of sync. What we need to do, let's, we're going to try this, let's see. What we're wanting to do is to click on the action, but it should have clicked on one of these two. I believe it's the first one, and that should have displayed a, a page that would then have a an add to cart button. This does not have an add to cart button. So what I'm going to do is close this, go back and reopen, and we need to stop. And let's see if we add, I'm not even going to, oh, let's, Get the output again. Sometimes when you're moving the mouse and that process is occurring, it will stop that. So let me go. There it is. I'm going to close that window. Re-expand the IDE. And what I was saying was you can take, say, a statement, this portion of the statement, and put right before this line and click on the dot the period and that pops up a little window in telesense support i want the sync double click now i can just take and copy paste that line and I want to put that before this point and before the cart. So now that's additional lines we're putting in to try to make sure we've got decent synchronization going on to keep things in, in, in balance between the what's happening in the script, what's being executed, as well in comparison to what navigation is going on in the application. We definitely got out of sync. So 
This time, hopefully, it will go better, and maybe we still see the error that I expected to see to be able to put in AI support. Let's move on. Go ahead and save this and execute again. Wouldn't it be interesting if this time it w works with no errors? I have a hard time believing that one, but this is a thought. Momentarily, we should see it begin to run through the test cycle. There we are. We're getting through those two clicks. We got past the, yes, we're really going forward. We may go all the way to the end. Well, we still have some other errors. I'm not able to show you fully the AI, so I'm going to have to just tell you about it. We did, I did add the AI. This time I added the other statements for the synchronization. And as I mentioned, you could go either way. With the AI, it was a matter of clicking that, it goes to the application, and then it wants, and you click anywhere in the application, it will then want to uh, inspect to find out what objects it can detect. You want to make sure you turn on the text as well, so that you can see all the text links are detected. And then you click on whatever it is you, you know it should be clicking on to move forward in the navigation. And that code will be added to your script in progress. So you're in a debug mode and it allows you to update your script from AI. Then you can stop it and restart it and then it should run successfully. All right, so we have one more round probably on this. We know that that checkpoint will not work because it has, it doesn't have a problem with the second two, just the first one. And that's what it's seeing to show you that there's nothing in the alt values. So it's expecting something should have been put in each of those images. And we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we see the same thing with this checkpoint, that same alt, and it's finding none of the more defined. So, we're just going to, br to uh, turn those off, comment those two lines of code so that they don't execute and cause errors. And it looks like that's all that's left in this particular case. We'll run it one more time and then see if that all of the problems are fixed because of the synchronization this time. All right, we're in action one. I want to go to action two and I want to comment out this statement here all the way at the bottom I want to comment out line 49 so that should take care of those two remaining errors and as I said we do have the AI context browser statement but that's just a required statement that I added by clicking the button to add it. But we normally would have an AI 
for this selection and for this selection here, the SAP UI list methods. Those were not working, but because we have the sync, it seems to be working. What we expected that one of those would have been an error. Instead, we ended up getting an error over here on the add to cart, and those did not give us an error. So because it's not behaving as I expected it, and it did that several times before I went live, well, that's the nature of things when we're doing it live. May have even been interfered by my recording the video for this. So I don't know. I thank you for being patient with me and allowing me to show you some things that you can do. And let's go ahead and do this execution one more time. Save and execute. Remember we're doing the original. We don't have all the enhanced code in there. We do have the fixes. The test cycle has begun. Looks like it's going all the way through again. So we have a working script, this time with more sync statements to execute rather than the AI. So you could conclude that either one should work. I do like what I see with the AI. It's a good enhancement to the UFT product. You can see everything now is working fine. We don't have all the checks that we have in the enhanced version, but it's a script that is actually working now. How long it will I, is anybody's guess, <laughs> but it is working. I do thank you for your time. So check out my follow-up demo videos that demonstrate using UFT for recording and testing web applications. The video should be entitled something like UFT Web Recording and Testing.